Hi everyone. I have a beautiful day happening right now. Got the sun straight above the camera. And it's a wonderful day. It's around 2 or 3 p.m. ish. Just out getting a little sunshine, enjoying the day. It's really beautiful. Uh, just natural sounds, you know, perfect, perfect situation. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about colloidal platinum as the main topic, but I'm going to go in a couple different directions with this as well. So, um, in this video, the introduction is probably going to be kind of long, so if that's not what you're here for, you can go to the description, the description box below or the comment section and skip to a more relevant part to what you're looking, looking for <clears throat> in this video. Uh, the video is going to be broken down into four different parts. The first part is going to be introduction. It may, it may, be, it may get lengthy. And the second part is going to be my, my own anecdote, my own experience in using colloidal platinum. And uh, it's, how, it's my experience over about the past five months through this year. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to make it. It's uh, actually pretty simple. It takes about 15 minutes to do. So I'm going to you know, show you the, um, the, the down dirty details of how to make it, all, just how to do it. And then lastly in the video, and I think is just as important as anything else, if you're, you're curious about what, what colloidal platinum is and what platinum can do, I think it's important that you check out the end part of the, vi part of the video where I go through, I'm gonna go through the internet and I'm gonna go through some commercial uh, information and I'll even go through some of the more academic information. As you know, the academic information is kind of hard to define and hard to break, harder to break down because it's not in plain language. But, um, and it's probably, and probably by going into the academic stuff, it's not gonna be that beneficial for everyone but you know it's going to give you a more general a, a more specific idea of what uh colloidal platinum is what it's about and you know how it works in the body so uh with that all said uh let's get started with the video now uh i'd like to start by uh saying what got me uh going down this 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 rabbit hole or been going, got me following this path of information is through uh, this year I first began experimenting with uh, colloidal gold and I, I many years ago I heard about the uh, monatomic gold which I, I've yet to try the monatomic gold but I, I have I was I'm, I was able to make the colloidal gold this year and I got to experience it and, and see what it was all about and it sparked a lot of ideas within me I learned a lot from that experience of uh, actually experimenting with the colloidal gold. And uh, it led me through a couple different pathways and trains of thought. Um, one of the main uh, pathways of thought that it led me down was that, okay, if, if, if gold is a mineral, that if you can make it bioavailable, which is basically if you, when, what you're doing when you make colloidal gold, you're taking gold, something that's inert, that can't work in the body. The body doesn't deal with gold, pure gold. Um, you make it bioavailable. You make it so that the body can digest it and break it down and use it. And then, you know, the beauty comes when the body can actually use it. When the body can actually use it, uh, some really wonderful, profound things happen. Um, it unlocks uh, some, some keys, some, some locks. It unlocks some, uh, some different um, genetics within the body and you have different different experiences uh, by by unlocking that then it, it makes you think like what else is out there what else are we missing and uh, you, you know the what they say like the recommended minerals that they say we, we're supposed to get in our diet the essential minerals um, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen for you if you if I forget it or if you want to see it but um, you know things like um, magnesium potassium uh, iron, iron, copper, uh, molybdenum, uh, silicone, uh, what else, um, um, selenium. There's a lot of uh, essential minerals that uh, they say that we're supposed to get. Actually, not, it's not that many. It's not, it's not a lot. There's only about 10 that they say are essential. 
And um, it got me thinking, essential for what? Essential just, just to be normal? Essential just to, just to be mediocre? Or, you know, can we, can we, be, can we be better? Can we be super? Um, are there some different parts of us that we can unlock? And um, that's what um, led me down uh, this, this rabbit hole of um, trying to understand what other minerals that the body uses and um, why don't we know that much about them? And uh, yeah, it, 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 the goal got me thinking about that. Um, it got me thinking about that because, you know, there's um, other, like the, uh, one of the biggest uh, things or biggest resources that people all over the world um, fight over or uh, compete with one another over are minerals. You know, a lot of big part of life is about the minerals. And um, I started thinking about, okay, what about the more expensive minerals? What about the minerals that are, that are kind of hard to get? Or the minerals that actually are, are abundant if you have the proper machinery that can that can um, get them and excavate them and, and, and dig them up or whatever. And uh, and like I started doing some research and I, f I found that like the like the two most expensive uh, minerals one is I think the most expensive one right now is rhodium at the time of making this video it's about eighteen thousand dollars per ounce, which is um, that's about nine times the price of gold. So. Uh, then, then you have um, iridium. Iridium, I think, is at, at this time of filming, it's about six, six thousand and some, some dollars per ounce. So that's three times the price of gold. So, uh, you know, I started looking into those. Like, what do, what do those do? And I learned by looking into those that um, five percent, like five percent of um, the the brain is composed of, uh, I think, rhodium and iridium. And it's like, whoa, you know, if that's that composes the brain, and we never get it in our diet. We 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 were never we never um, di digested, and the body never gets to use it. It's like, yo, what are we missing? Makes you makes you, it just made me really think. What what are we missing? And um, are they keeping these things away from us? Is is this intentional? And then you know you know with the water supply, um, there's certain minerals in the water supply. They only give us just certain few minerals. But what about these these important minerals? Like, um, it's well known, well proven that colloidal gold, improve, it, it increases your IQ, it, it increases mental health. And, um, you know, you have countries have, um, they have gold stockpiled. Why not put this, put, why, why not put this into the water supply? Why put stuff like fluoride and stuff into the water, water supply? When you can put gold and make the, make the whole population smarter. Why? It's, it's like, it looks like a, some type of, um, some type of trap or something or it looks like something intentional something intentionally done I don't know just just my thoughts on it and um, so I you know I, I decided to you know I, I looked through these things and um, in, of course the rhodium and um, iridium are very expensive too expensive for me so um, I stopped looking through those actually they wouldn't be that expensive if I had caught them maybe 20 10 to 20 15 10 20 15 years ago because um they're they're minerals and um they're a major resource and you know goal is is what backs the money system up and um you, you, i just mentioned rhodium one ounce of rhodium is eighteen thousand dollars and you know you <laughs> Like, uh, like I'm, I decided to like buy a couple of these minerals. Um, at first, it's like, oh, this is kind of pricey, and um, you know, I never in my, in my life before, th uh, you know, knew of any um, real reason to have have minerals and gold and stuff like this. You know, to me, I, to, I just thought it was just like some frivolous thing that that people people do just to um, to show off to other people. But I'm um, getting that you know, it goes it goes a lot deeper. I guess anything that's um, a really big uh, part of society, part of life, and um, it, it's never everything's here for a reason. It, it is not just here for for no reason. And I'm pretty sure there's more behind the gold than than we know. Even though gold's not the most expensive mineral, but there's there's more to meet the eye behind the gold. I'm, I'm wondering about that. And uh, you know, there's lots of um, theories that go into this, the realm of sci-fi about you know why why gold is so sought after and that type of thing. But you know, that's for another day to talk about that another another video but um uh yeah so I, I continued looking through different minerals and checking their different uh 
abilities and influences on the body and what they do to the body how they can unlock different aspects of us our, our dna um is is there some type of spiritual connection with the with the different minerals and how they affect us and um i got to thinking about that you know minerals are just you know they're from the earth you know earth is one major element that is um really important to us you know uh they say, you know, there's, there's water, there's earth, there's wind, there's fire. And, um, you know, all these all these are important. And um, I guess you got to break it down into details to find out and learn more about them and get get into the, and, and, and understand the specifics of how these things help and affect us. But, um, you know, if you think about just earth, a lot of people think about dirt or soil, but, you know, it's, you know, it's the minerals also. So, you know, we're, they say we're made of, we're made of earth. We're made of of dirt, the minerals, and I, I, I feel that. I feel that we truly are. But um, the first mineral that I decided to experiment with to do my own research and find out more about is is platinum, and um, platinum was uh, is actually the the next cheapest mineral um, after gold. Actually, silver silver is um, a big one too. Um, silver, colloidal silver. It pretty much um, rids you of any type of um, infection, bacterial infection, infection, viral infection. Uh, if you supplemented that, it's a very potent um, antimicrobial, anti-pathogen, uh, antiviral. Does a lot of um, things to um, keep the body uh, from keep the body well and from being sick. And um, silver's pretty cheap. But um, the next thing after silver, I, I got silver too. I bought silver, bought gold, bought bought silver. Not a, not a lot, but just a little bit. And you know, even, even you know, I'm, I'm buying these things, and a lot of people look at you know the money. But if worse came to worse, I have resources. I could sell this. If, if if the apocalypse came, I have you know these 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 minerals, and I could get the you know if worse came to worse, I could just I could sell them. I could put money in my pocket. I could feed myself for for a year, if the worst came to worse. But um, yeah, so so platinum was the was the first mineral that I, I came across and uh, began to experiment with. And um, when I um, I started doing the research on the, the the platinum and what it could do, and um, it's quite different from the gold. Um, before I go into what the platinum uh, can can do, um, I want to talk about how. The human, the human body and the human genome, they say that the majority of our DNA is, is dormant and um, it doesn't work, it's junk, it's useless. So that means, you know, uh, almost all information for our body and for our, in, in the codes of our body is, is junk, is garbage, is useless. But um, the, our creator, our God, our origin, you know, however you want to, you know, paint that, does not make mistakes and is not wasteful. Every resource Everything, everything is used. Nothing goes to waste. Even waste becomes fuel. Even the poop that you poop out, it, it, it starts new life. So nothing, nothing is waste. And, you know, uh, when you start, you know, thinking about the, the junk DNA thing and all this stuff, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't, even the great, the great supposed minds, none of them agree that it's actually, really actually junk DNA. So, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, like, how does, you know, these different minerals unlock various um, DNA? You know, not, you know, minerals, not, not, necessarily, not necessarily the only uh, thing that unlocks DNA. There's many different things that unlocks DNA, but I think this is, you know, a, a realm of um, a specific area of things that unlock DNA. And, um... Also, if you um, go back in time through a lot of the, um, the stuff that they consider sci-fi or consider um, myths and stuff like this, for example, um, the information about the, the ancient civilizations, the Anunnaki, and you know the Anunnaki, they say that um, human beings were seated here like, like six or 10,000 or however many years ago by um, a higher a higher functioning and more civilized um, civilization or, or beings and they called them Anunnaki so basically some people basically think that um, we're we are in the image of some aliens from another planet or not from the earth as we know it like some people think they call they say that 
they say that um, you know it's, it's, it's extraterrestrials and that type of thing, but um, I think we don't fully know what the Earth actually is and 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 what what what's inhabiting the the full entire Earth. I think it's a lot of mystery in that too, which you know I want to delve into in the future. But um, yeah, even with that story, if you follow that story and believe that story. Um, one um, big thing they talk about with that is that um, they they get the the Anunnaki or the aliens the alien species that see, that they think seeded the planet that they think is what the Bible the Bible's God or the, the beginning people of of the Bible they think that's what the Bible kind of um, symbolizes is symbolic of or an allegory of um, that the Anunnaki um, experience and 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 how they how they interacted on the Earth these many years ago. But uh, one part of the story is that uh, they, they, um, you know, in a, in, in, in a lot of uh, biblical and um, religious and um, traditional historical texts, uh, uh, there's everyone all over the world, they talk about the great flood. Well, they, know, they agree that there was a big flood on the earth. So that's one thing that's agreed upon, that there was a huge flood on the earth. And um, according to some information, I may be screwing this up, so excuse me if I am. Um, prior to the prior to the flood, um, people lived for a lot longer than they live now. And after the flood, they, they um, the lifespan got shortened down a whole lot. And um, according to uh, also, you know, what they say about this about this type of thing, um, you know, in regards to the uh, Anunnaki and, and those theories, is that uh, that uh, they intentionally shortened our lives because if we had too long of lives, then we could we could get smarter. You know, if you ever live a long life and a bunch of wisdom, um, you can get smarter and make really fast adaptations. But if you have a short life, um, you know, life so short, you know, all, all you can do is um, you can you can grow up, reproduce, and then get old and then and then die. You don't really have much time for to to, to grow really. You spend all your time just just hustling and bustling and trying to get you just trying to get the um get those little victories that we get in life and then you miss out on on trying to learn anything and um raising the whole vibration of the civilization so the story goes that um for that reason um whoever the powers that be the um the ones that are over us you know whether it's anarchy or whatever um they they tampered with our dna and they um shorten shorten our telomeres um you, when you shorten the telomeres, you shorten the life of a person. You know, you, the telomeres of your DNA, and um, you know that's that's how the story goes. So you know, I've gone down these rabbit holes and just got me thinking into you know a lot about these types of, of things. And um, um, the reason why I'm talking about all this, all of this is you know because of you know the, the minerals. I feel it's like something right before our eyes, and why don't we know anything about this? Why isn't this mainstream? And why isn't it? very well studied out in the open so that's my introduction and um now i'm going to <laughs> finally i'm going to talk about um colloidal platinum my own personal experience <laughs> Thank you.